Welcome back. The war in Israel entering day 18 this morning. Hamas released two more hostages as negotiations for more releases are underway. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that U.S. officials are, quote, recommending Israel not rush into a ground offensive before Washington has the chance to get military assets in place and prepared to use in the event of an expansion of the Israeli-Hamas war. Joining me right now is Fox News senior strategic analyst and chairman of the Institute for the Study of War, General Jack Keane, back with us this morning. General, great to see you. Thanks very much for being here. I want to get your take on where we stand here with regard to the United States' readiness, because I was quite concerned when I read that piece in the Wall Street Journal this morning that the U.S. is trying to get Israel to slow down and not rush into a ground offensive until the U.S. can get its assets in place. What does that tell you, General? Well, if that's accurate, and we don't know if it is, it's likely that the United States then has some intelligence that Iran is going to expand the war by releasing Hezbollah to attack Israel, not with the limited measured attacks that are taking place right now. Those attacks that are going on in the northern border with Israel and Lebanon, that's, that's designed to force the Israelis to commit forces to that area as opposed to Gaza. But the attack we're talking about is they have over 130,000 rockets and missiles, most of them considerably more lethal, greater range, and more precision than what the uh, <clears throat> Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad has in Gaza. So that is really the issue. It, if they're doing that, I, I suspect they have some pretty good intelligence. We, I think when we assess whether Iran will do this or not, I think it has, a lot, has to depend on the Israeli operation in Gaza, whether they order Hezbollah to do this. The last time uh, the Israelis and Hezbollah really tangled with each other was way back in 2006, and it didn't work out so well for the Israelis. After 34 days, they left the area. But that was a ground assault that took place there. It, it resulted in firing all of the service chiefs uh, by the prime minister at the time. But I think, Maria, to emphasize it again, I think the U.S. probably has some intelligence here, and, and that's driving the positioning of their assets. Remember, they stated they, they were positioning the assets to deter Iran from going into this conflict and expanding it. And I think that's the prudent measure to take. But we'll see I, where we're going. I, the next, go ahead, Maria. I guess what I was concerned about, General, and, and, and tell me what you think about this, is the idea that the U.S. is not ready. And I remember a comment President Biden made uh, a while ago saying that we were running out of ammunition. And this is really what was concerning me, the fact that the U.S. is not ready uh, in the case of an expanded uh, war should the U.S. be forced to get involved in a bigger way. Do you believe the U.S. is ready? What kind of readiness do you see here? And we've talked about this a number of times in, in terms of ensuring that the military and the readiness is up to par. And that comment in the journal saying that Washington wants the chance to get the military assets in place and prepared for use in the event of an expansion of the conflict, that raised my red flag saying, oh, the U.S. is having issues with ammunition or readiness. That's what I was getting at, sir. No, I, I, I think you're, uh, that's not the interpretation I, I would make of it. Okay. I mean, look, we're, we're a global power, and we can project power any place in the world, but we don't have it sitting in every location, you know, that we may have a potential conflict in. So we have to move resources to that area. No other country can move the kind of resources we have. You're seeing two major aircraft carrier groups uh, moved in, moving into that area, fighter squadrons moving into it, air defense systems doing the same. No other country can do that on the scale that we're doing it. But we're not sitting there uh, where any conflict could potentially occur and have all of our forces ready to go. The fact that we can get them there in a matter of days, uh, we're the only power in the world that can do that.
Okay. Let me get your take on this letter that House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer and Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene sent. They're opening a probe into the Defense Department's policies to ensure that American military aid and weapons do not fall into the hands of terrorist groups. This letter sent to Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin yesterday uh, says that they want a staff briefing, saying that the committee has seen reports that U.S. manufactured weapons are being redistributed and resold in secondary markets to terrorist organizations, including Hamas. General, we've questioned where Hamas has gotten its firepower before. And I know that partly they've gotten some ammunition and, and uh, firepower from North Korea, uh, perhaps China. But what do you make of Comer's questions about whether or not they have gotten U.S.-made weapons? Well, if they do, I mean, it's worth, it's certainly worth taking a look at. I mean, you know, look at U.S. weapons are very popular around the world. And the fact that they can uh, be repur repurposed uh, by others is not too surprising in my view. And certainly uh, when we left Afghanistan and we gave lots of weapons to the Afghan security forces and they had our trucks, they, they had our helicopters, they were using them and they had many of our weapons. It wouldn't surprise me if some of those were repurposed as well. But is it worth taking a look at and finding out what happened here? Yes. But American weapons, very popular, obviously, and they get repurposed. And it's not too surprising that it does. I think we should find what, what the sources are. And if there's something we need to do to block it, certainly we should. Yeah. The, the letter says, an Israel Defense Forces commander echoed concerns stating that Palestinian groups in the Gaza Strip possessed U.S. weapons seized by the Taliban during the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. And all of those weapons that were left on the ground, obviously, uh, may very well, the Taliban may have, may have gotten those, and, and, and that's why Hamas is, is so well equipped here, partly. Well, so you understand. When the United States left Afghanistan and its military, we took everything we wanted to take with us, some things okay. we destroyed in place. But we had been supplying the Afghan security forces for 20 years with our equipment. Uh -huh. And when you lose a war, like the Afghan security forces do, and you surrender the country, like the United States did, the enemy takes the spoils. They take the weapons. Of course. And they take everything else they want to take. That's the way the yeah. war ends. We ended that war in a strategic defeat for the United States by surrendering the country to the very enemy that we were fighting by no longer supporting the Afghan security forces. That is, that is one of the awful prices we paid for what happened there. Wow. Understood. Uh, General, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks very much. We appreciate your time, always. Yeah, great talking to Maria.